The history of fresco painting is very old. In different periods it has been used to tell the stories, convey knowledge, and to ornament the architecture. Fresco paintings are discovered in almost every part of the world. With the passage of time this technique got better and better. In start only the shades of black and red were used which were obtained from oxides of iron. However, more tones were incorporated gradually with the passage of time. In Egyptian period this technique was used in calligraphy and figure drawing. However Egyptians were not painting realistically. Rather than realism their style was illustrative in which maximum information is conveyed using multiple perspectives. In Europe, Minoan art is also based on fresco technique. Their work is more realistic and in better condition. Greeks had also contributed in fresco paintings and decorated their temples with religious subjects. When the Greeks were constructing temples another parallel civilization was also working on fresco painting. Their work can be seen in Indian subcontinent in age and archives. Their major subjects are based on teachings of Gautam Bud. This is a huge series of caves consisting of 30 caves. Romans developed this technique to paint very realistically. They divided the fresco technique into three subcategories. Buon fresco is done on a wet surface whereas seco fresco is carried on a dry surface using egg yolk as a binder usually. Mezzo fresco become very famous in which paint is applied on semi-dry surface. During Renaissance period Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci and Raphael emerged as a legend. In Mughal period fresco was used to paint fauna and fauna mostly to decorate the architecture. They decorated palaces and mosques so much beautiful that it looked like heavenly work. They painted very complex geometrical patterns and merged with the floral patterns. The most famous mosques in Lahore are Wazir Khan Mosque and Maryam Zimani Mosques where fresco art can be seen from the Mughal period. The work in mosques which was once one of a kind are now on decline due to mismanagement and carelessness. The first step to start a fresco painting is to prepare the lime putty. In order to prepare the lime putty quick lime is added in sufficient water to be quenched. This process is highly exothermic. When the entire lime is quenched and the solution becomes cool, it is sifted with the help of a piece of cloth. The lime water passes through the cloth leaving silica and clinker behind. After certain time the lime settles down and a gradient of water and lime is formed. Water is separated carefully and fresh water is added. This process is repeated several times to remove the chemicals and impurities from the lime. At the end the creamy lime putty is obtained. Here are the tools that we need to prepare the surface. It includes wooden and steel trowels, goat hair brushes, distilled water, burnishing tools, and tracing paper. 
Fresco painting can be done either on a wall as a mural painting, or on a water absorbent slab. Usually this slab is made up of plaster of Paris. The thickness of the slab must be half inch minimum. In case of a large fresco painting the cerise is divided in portions. One portion is worked on at a time. When the surface is prepared, a thin layer of lime putty is applied on it. The next step is to transfer the drawing on the surface. There are different methods to achieve it. Either the drawing is transferred using contours with the help of pointed tool, or the lines are pierced in a series of holes, with the help of a needle on the tracing sheet. Crushed charcoal, in the form of powder, is bound in a piece of cloth, and used to mark the holes, onto the surface. The drawing is completed, on a tracing paper sheet first. Direct drawing with pencil is not possible on fresco surface because it will remove the lime putty. The resultant impression is a drawing in dotted lines. Colors used in fresco painting are natural pigments, mineral and metal oxides. The well-grounded pigment is mixed with water and applied on the lime surface. When the colors are applied in fresco, they have translucent effect like water colors. Carbon dioxide in air lime, and pigments react chemically to form a hard rock-like surface of calcium carbonate. Pigment become permanent part of that surface. This process is called carbonation. No other color binder is used in Buon Fresco. Roman painted mostly biblical references in churches. This work was commissioned by the churches. Fresco painting is completed in steps. Initially only the colors are filled. In the next step details are added. Shadings and darks are added in the last step. It should be taken care of that lime doesn't dry until the painting is complete. Otherwise it would not absorb the paint. On drying the pores of lime coating are closed and intake of color pigments is stopped. When one portion is complete its edges are cleared, so that the plaster of next portion becomes part of it. Same process is followed for each step. Fresco technique is very long lasting technique and lasts for thousands of years, if done in a right way. The word fresco in Italian means fresh. It means natural pigments are applied on lime when it is fresh. Today fresco technique is not followed as much as in past. There are many reasons behind it.
Oil painting has more tonal variation if compared to fresco. It is quicker and easier. However the life of oil painting is not as long as the fresco painting. Today the fresco painting is done on a smaller scale either on slabs made up of plaster of Paris or ceramic tiles. However fresco painting has a glorious and splendid past attached with it.